Now, it's an honor for me to present to you our resource person. Our resource person is currently an assistant professor of college and college secretary of the University of the Philippines College of Music. She graduated a uh, Bachelor of Music in Music Education, piano concentration, voice, meet, voice minor, magna cum laude, and Master of Music in Music Education, choral conducting minor at the UP College of Music. She's currently a PhD candidate in sociology and anthropology under the supervision of Dr. Euphrosia Abaya of UP College of Education. She taught music from preschool to high school in both public and private schools prior to UP. At present, she, she teaches music education foundations, music theory for dancers, special project in music education, graduate music education research methods, and thesis. As a performer, she's a member of Musica Sofia Early Music Ensemble and has performed in prestigious venues. She served as a president, as a president of the Philippine Society of Music Education, or PSME, from 2017 to 2019, and the secretary of UP College of Music Alumni Association in 2018. Her past appointments include former chair of Cultural Education Committee under the Teacher Education Panel of the Commission on Higher Education 2011 to 2013, the former secretary of the Music Committee of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts in 2010 to 2016, and former chair of the Traditional Music Ensemble of the NAMSIA 2016. Her researches on music education and educational anthropology were presented in conferences here and abroad. Her articles are also published not only in the Philippines, but internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a virtual applause to our resource speaker, Professor Josh Filippi Godaluto. Okay, what is music education? Professor Del Valle, who is our professor in music ed, she said that it's the transmission of music knowledge, skills, and values in society. Name various areas. So, kasama po ang formal and formal at saka non -formal. Okay. Okay, would it be possible that MAPE components, especially music, be separated from one another so learners and teachers can focus on the competencies or standards that students need to attain? Paghihiwa-hiwalayin daw po ma'am yung MAPE, music, RPE, at saka yung health. Kasi isa po siya nung ngayon, as of today. Oo, hanggang ngayon, ano, MAPE pa din siya. Sa experience ko, maswerte naman ako nung nagturo ako na music ka lang talaga ang tinuro ko. Uh, nung sa Poveda, yun ang una kong trabaho, high school music teacher. Tapos sa Ateneo, grade school music teacher. Sa Waldorf, chorus teacher. May ibang theory teacher. Merong recorder teacher. No? Uh, pero, yes, oh. um, Sa mga public schools where there's a lot of uh, kulang ang budget, mape siya. No? Saan ba nang galing ito? Uh, siguro dahil masyadong maraming uh, ang priority ng ating gobyerno ay really for academic subjects. Kaya gano'n, ano. Pero, syempre, as musicians, gusto natin mas maraming oras sa music. So, ang DepEd, sana, magre-revise sila ngayong April 19 to 23 ng mag-uumpisa na ng curriculum revision, no? yung K to 12. So, sana, ano. Uh, pero sa CHED, kasi dalawang level, ano, yung in-explain ko dito, ang CHED, naghiwalay na. Meron pong Bachelor of Physical Education and School Sports, BPE ang tawag. At meron namang uh, Bachelor of Culture and Arts Education. Bakit hindi Bachelor of Music and Arts Education? No? Ang tanong. Ay lang naging basihan po niyan ay yung National Heritage Law of 2009 kung saan uh, ang mga programa daw ng gobyerno ay magkakaroon ng culture education. So bale ang ano nang ang programa na yan ay culture siya, ang framework, pero nandoon tayo dun sa arts. So ang kasama diyan music, visual art, dance at drama. Okay po. Dapat po tayo sa sunod. Not all children in our country have the opportunity to enroll in private music lessons since most of the public school teachers teaching MAPE are not music majors and teaching music are difficult for them, are there any strategies to address this problem in music education? 
okay, uh, alam mo kami ni Ma'am Borromeo, college pa lang ako, nagbibigay na kami ng workshop sa PNU noon, sa Ateneo, sa Xavier U, sa Cagayan de Oro. Walang katapos ang teacher training. Ano, pero ang nangyayari, uh, after one week, babalik. So dati. Ano, kasi unang-una yung music competence. Oo. Oh, kailangan mamahalin ng guru yung music eh. So, uh, ano ang sagot? Eh, community music. Uh, dito sa Taytay, ang banda, napakalaki ng influensya kasi marunong silang buwasa ng nota at tumuntog at mag-transpose on the spot. Paano nila yung natututunan? Meron silang libreng lisyon sa kanilang maestro twice a week at rehearsal. Siguro hindi ngayon, ano, dahil pandemic. Meron silang Rehearsal ano, Dea, ng Sabado at Linggo. Ayan, si Dea, lumaki yan na nag-boom music and movement kasi majorit siya. Ano? Tapos, nag a sila. So, as teachers, I don't think short-term courses will be the, ano, the solution. The only solution is for them to experience music making. Uh, uh, may experience kami naman buro ngayon yan eh. Magtuturo kami ng beat kaya tagal-tagal bago makuha ang beat. Alam mo yun? Kaking, webilis. So, eh di, eh, isang linggo lang kami doon sa lugar, pa, paano mo naman matuturo yun, di ba? So, ang kailangan talaga may follow-up. Sumali sila sa ensemble. Marami po tayong rondalya, choir, ano pa ba? Banda. Banda po, apo. Opo. Sumali po sila doon kasi uh, tinuturuan tayong makinig. Yun ang pa Iba pa rin po, Ma'am Joy, ang nagagawa ng experience sa music case po yung binabasa natin. Ano po? Ay, opo. Kaya nga si Ma'am Borromeo noon, sabi niya sa akin, magturo ka sa elementary, tapos lumipat ka sa high school, tapos lumipat ka sa preschool o di kaya sa college, at saka ka babalik dito pag magre-retire ako. O, kasi yung lahat ng binasa ko ngayon doon sa libro ng music ed, nakikita ko, ay, ganun pala, ganito pala. Next question. Is it a good idea or do you agree to have a student learn at least two instruments before being promoted to senior high school like an elective subject? Okay, I don't know if I understood the question correctly. Uh -huh. So is this about SPA or is this about general music uh, curriculum? Kasi magkaiba sa SPA. I think in SPA, they're required to learn several instruments. No? Uh, but my answer is that uh, it's always good to develop instruments that are uh, related. So, for example, in, in the winds, you can learn clarinet and saxophone. You know? And then when you grow up a little, you can handle the French horn and the trombone. So, what will that develop? Breathing and articulation. You know? And for to a certain extent, your lips will, will adjust it. Oh, alam, alam ni Dea yan kasi yung mga taga-banda talagang tinitignan yung kanilang mga physical, uh, tinitignan yung ngipin, yung pantay-pantay, especially for flute. <laughs> Risk and fine motor for strings and keyboards, very important kasi when you try to play for a long time, mapapagod ka kung, kung matigas ang risk mo. Uh, and then hand and feet coordination for percussion. Have you tried playing a drum set? So difficult, ha? Kasi you have to, you have to read how many lines? One, two, three, four. No? And then you have to play different lines. No? Eh, kung pianista ka, eh, titignan mo yung lines. Okay, hindi ka na nga magtotono eh. Di ba? So, but here's the thing. When, when we were in, in the Rondalia Festival, Ansha, you were there also, and Sir Leo, in Tagum, uh, we had, we had a, the daughter of a datu. No? Sheila was her name. And uh, she's Mansaka. And then I told her, do you... Do you teach your your uh, youth? Ano? Kya? Uh, ano yon? The, the ano ba yung instrumento na yon? Uh, hegelung, kujapi. Kujapi, apa? Oh, so sabi niya, inaantay daw nung mga uh, ano na tatawagin nung nung instrumento yung bata. Very interesting. The instrument has to call to you. That's their theory. Why? Because if the instrument is an extension of your body tatawagin ka niya. Meron kang affinity. Now, later on, I look, there is also a theory on music instrument and personality in music psychology. The College of Music Education. May ganong research. Ano? So, kind of leads us into thinking, dapat may choice yung bata. So, aside from the physical, 
meron siyang choice kung ano ang gusto niyang ano uh, now in terms of the curriculum like an elective subject uh, <clears throat> or as long as the economics will allow see i think the problem here is that who will provide the instruments in schools Opo, yun, 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 isa sa problem instruments po. Oo. Now, uh, the solution I see is PPP. Private Public Partnership. Kaysa mag-donate sila ng mga kung ano-ano, let them donate money to buy instruments. No? And their maintenance. Kasi mahirap mag-maintain ang instruments. Sa next question, paano po mapapadali ang pagtuturo ng pagbabasa ng musical notation sa bata? Ayan. So, tanong kasi Tagalog. So, sinagot ko rin ng Tagalog. Uh, kailangan nating tandaan that notation was invented before recording as a way to record something. So, there are many kinds of notation. Cipher notation, which is numbers. This is used in, in Gamelan and Kulintang. Chart notation, which is used for Rondalia. Numes, pneumatic notation, which is used for chat. Lead sheet, which is used for pop, tablature, which is used for guitar, and staff, which is used for classical, orchestra, band, and choir. Therefore, we have to contextualize. Kung magtuturo ikaw ng pop, bakit ka gagamit ng staff notation ng kay dami-dami? What you need is just a lead sheet. No? So, depende po kung anong klase notation ang ituturo. Uh, gumagamit sila ng scaffolding. Ano yung scaffolding? Uh, picture notation yon, No? Kasi yung mga maliliit na bata, hirap po sila mag-focus their eyes. Uh, they only develop their eyes uh, later on, mag grade 4. No? So, so that if you have to teach them staff notation, you have to make it a little bigger. No? Because of, of the bio biology. Or you use iconic notation. Uh, and then on a bigger scale. You know, we speak before we write. Eh? Uh, ang nangyayari ngayon sa DepEd or even in traditional schools, the, you teach them katulad ng ginawa ng sarundalya namin, uh, ang nangyayari, pinagnota kami na hindi maganda yung technique namin. Alam mo yun, nakakatugtog ka nga pero kaya pangit-pangit. So dapat yung dinutugtog mo, enjoy mo. No? So, uh, before we teach notation, the students have to know how to listen. They have to listen to patterns, no? not individual notes. They have to listen to patterns. And then when they listen to patterns, they can imitate. That's the time you introduce, oh, this is, this is what you played. How does music education adapt to the needs of these changing times? Ito po yung issues ngayon sa music school. Social justice. Uh, Maraming bata, ang ayaw nila ang inaaral nilang musika sa school. Hindi sila makarelate. Uh, diversity in music ed. Uh, so halimbawa, sa mother tongue, uh, kailangan yung mga songs ba? Tagalog o English? Hindi ba? Hindi ba mas maganda kung, kung the whole spectrum of our songs ay may tuturo? Uh, culturally responsive music education. So yun po yung issues. Uh, so yun, yung mother tongue is a step Multicultural music ed. Alam mo, ang bansa natin, Pilipinas, is located geographically in a very, very puntahan ng mga barko. And so, sabi ni Dr. David Irving, bago daw nagkaroon ng Dubai, no? bago nagkaroon ng ano, yung panahon ng Britanya at saka ng Espanya, ang global city daw ay ang Pilipinas. And so, that's why Filipino kids, they get so bored. If, if, ang, ang ears natin, napaka, laging gusto natin bago. Because of graffiti. And so, uh, kailangan mag-adapt tayo. Uh, noong araw, ang sabi ni Ma'am Bromeo sa akin, oh, huwag kang magkukuday ng ganyan lang. Uh, kailangan alam mo lahat ng method. Kasi, depende dun sa community o spelahan na mapupuntahan mo. I mean, education is a product of the current society. Actually, Martin Lippmann, Philosophy for Children, he said, when children look at the world, 
they see it in their own eyes with their own unique brain. And who are we to tell them the reality? We live in another time. No? So, ang teachers kasi, we want to, we want to share what we experience. Ang problema, iba yung brain nila, iba yung panahon nila. No? So, we really should be more active and more sensitive. What are your recommended teaching techniques that can be used in various modalities in this new normal education setup? Ang dami! I was talking to my husband, ano? Sabi ko, parang nai-enjoy ko tong remote learning sa music theory. Kasi, alam mo yon. tinuhuan ko yung mga dance majors. You know, I teach music theory for dance majors. And it's so difficult to do that because they're not musicians. But at ang goal is kailangan makabasa sila ng notation, dance notation, music notation, kasi ipokoreograph nila yun. So, uh, ang, ang ano ngayon, ang laki ng ano, kasi nga yung internet, no, ang daming materials, pero i-curate mo yun. Ano. So, in my class, I teach them Indian ko na ko, yung ginawa natin ko nila. And they have to improvise on that. Then, we have to improvise on African drop patterns. Na ninonotate nila. After they improvise, they have to use new score and notate it. Yun. So, ano po, yun, no? recommend to teaching techniques. They have to see, they have to hear, they have to move. Oh, if they have instruments at home, better. Pero alam nyo, yung African drumming ko, sabi ko sa kanila, can you get a uh, balde, yung timba? Ay, meron! So, ako, nakadrum ako, pero sila, balde na timba. Okay, can you try to uh, create two sounds? One ring and one dam one high and one low, possible siya. So, yun po. Uh, a lot of uh, improvisation. 